What's up YouTube? Today I wanted to share my thoughts on the Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Cash debate. There's a lot of talk right now about fear, uncertainty, and doubt, but in reality it's nothing to worry about. It's just market dynamics playing out and there's things that you can do to protect yourself if you're really that uncomfortable. In my opinion, what we're seeing is really the work of decentralization at work and in particular, the proper use of what a fork is supposed to be used for. There's been a big debate for a couple of years for two different teams to go two different ways, and we'll discuss them in a moment. And at first, right now, the, what we're talking about is the August 1st split for Bitcoin Cash, and what we're going to split from is Bitcoin Segwit. And as you can see, I have a couple of small differences between the two. What Bitcoin Cash does is remove SegWit from the equation and increase the block size from two megabyte soft limit to eight megabyte hard limit. So it's an adjustable setting for miners to choose. What we're moving from or what we're forking from is a one megabyte block size and a four megabyte block limit, which is also known as a SegWit channel. What that channel does is act as a payment layer like our financial system. So if you're used to banks and you swipe a card and it says pending, that's similar to what the payment channel does. It authorizes it first and then eventually blockchain or Bitcoin will settle at a later time. The hard fork scheduled for November 15 is SegWit2x. This is ultimately supported by all the miners because it gives the core devs what they want in SegWit and it also gives the miners the bigger block size. One thing about SegWit is that it's supposedly opt-in and you don't have to use the payment channel if you don't want to. And you could just use on-chain, but if the network is clogged, then those who are using the payment channel would take the express lane, so to speak, and get the payment done before you, but ultimately settle later. Whereas if you're on-chain, you have to wait for the payment and the settlement to go through once a network gets unclogged. So why do we even want Bitcoin Cash and why do the miners want it? Well, if we take a look at SegWit, what that does is it takes the original block of the Satoshi white paper and what it does is it cuts off the signature, basically cutting it in half and changing the form of the block into something else so that it can write on layers. Because it's also the payment channel, they also offload the fees as well as the signatures and therefore cutting the revenue of the miners. And that's part of the huge debate. The core team works for a company called Blockstream, which has a product called Liquid that develops these side chains for payment channels and use these fees as a revenue stream for their company. So miners are a bit upset because they're taking away their revenue stream when that has to pay for all the electricity, equipment, upkeep and maintenance and personnel. But since SegWit is supposedly opt in, if 2x goes through, then I think they believe that they'll be able to make up the difference by transaction volume. The problem with SegWit by itself is that the volume is artificially set low because of that one megabyte cap. So what Bitcoin Cash is supposed to be is a contingency plan just in case Core decides not to enable 2x. So that brings us to August 1st, which is the Bitcoin Cash fork date. And when this happens, I can see three things happening for the two extremes and the people riding in the middle, which is BCC gets dumped, people hold on to both, or BTC gets dumped for BCC. I'd expect the altcoin market to be pretty affected positively or negatively according to which one gets pumped or dumped. It will be interesting to see which volume has more, if it's BTC or BCC. Right now I would say the BCC is the underdog for sure. Personally, I'm in the hold on for dear life camp just to wait and see what happens because ultimately it boils down to the November 15th date, which I'll talk about after this. And I also think that this is the best part of decentralization because the market gets to choose which one it wants and nobody gets to dictate one side or the other. You just split. So moving on to the next showdown, which is probably going to be likely in mid-November, and it's really dependent on Bitcoin core team and what they decide to do. If they don't enable SegWit2x, some miners like Bitcoin.com has signaled that they will move all their hash power over to Bitcoin Cash. This could ultimately cause a domino effect of other miners defecting from 
the SegWit branch over to the Bitcoin Cash branch. What, we, what I don't expect is for the miners to go for 2x or BTC1 code from Jeff Garzik because BCC, the Bitcoin Cash, is already there and without SegWit. So keep in mind, this is just if Core decides not to implement it. I don't expect other miners to do it for them. I also expect BCC to move up. In the case that SegWit 2x is implemented by Bitcoin Core team, then I expect BCC to get crushed because no one will back the hash power. And basically, every all the miners get what they want and the contingency can go away, basically. What happens then is BCC will go down. Sometime after that, I would expect BTC to start climbing again now that the whole issue with block size has been settled. And it, keep in mind, it's been going on for years. With that taken care of, I would expect BTC to start climbing again soon after and reaching new heights. With all these things coming up in the near future over the next couple of months, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, if you don't want to stick around, you can just sell into cash and then just sit on the sideline. That's the easiest thing to do. If you want to gamble with BCC or at least collect it and hold on to see what happens, if you have Bitcoin, take it off the exchanges and wait until you can convert it to Bitcoin Cash using a different wallet. If you want to avoid the volatility, you can go out to USD Tether and just wait it out as well. Like I said, what I'm doing is I'm going to huddle or hold on for dear life and ride the wave and just see what ends up happening. If you're not too brave, then I would recommend not watching the ticker symbols daily during this time, especially August 1st and around that time then, because I would expect some high volatility in either direction. And if you can't handle it, you're going to either panic sell or panic buy, and don't do that. And if you want to stay in there but don't want to pull everything out, just sell enough to the point where you're comfortable putting a certain amount at risk and putting off some to the side. Ultimately, what we're seeing is a mini civil war, and I think this is necessary in the ecosystem so that we can hash some things out and we can ultimately push forward. And like I said, with decentralization, we can show each side that we're not going to be pushovers and that we actually need to compromise in order to move forward. And if we don't agree, then we'll ultimately let the market decide. So. Most importantly, have fun while you're doing this. It's exciting when things are good, but when things are kind of FUD, then y you know it can get a little stressful. But remember, it's an exciting time right now. It's very new and just enjoy the ride. It's going to be a little scary, but never risk more than you're willing to lose. I hope this has clarified some things for those of you who are kind of confused about it. And if I've made any mistakes, please let me know in the comment section below. I will say that I do have some experience in this field. I've been building and managing global distributed networks for 15 years in centralized companies. Scaling is always an issue whenever you get to certain points, but it's just a plateau, just like working out. You just have to break through and you got to figure out what gets you past it. Take a moment to think about if you really believe Bitcoin will change society and the world. And if so, stay calm and huddle on. If you're interested in reading a little bit more, I'm going to include some links to some articles down below in the description. And uh, you can go ahead and follow that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you dig it. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.